with another riff rundown with the lovely folks at Fishman. I am so, so excited to be here. This is one of my absolute favorite songs to play. We are today going to be playing Wild Horses by the Rolling Stones. Yes. So excited. I absolutely love this song. It's, again, a very, very fun one to play. What we are going to be doing here today is we're going to be playing this one in open G tuning. Yes. I, there is a very whimsical thing about playing this song in open G tuning. So that's what we're going to do here today. So how to get there, okay? We're going to drop your E string down to D, okay? So D, okay? Your A string, bring it down to G as in go. D string, keep it the same, D as in dog. G is in go, G string, you're gonna keep it there. B string, B is in boy, we're keeping it there too. And then the high E string, we're turning, tuning that down to D. Okay, so that's what's happening here. We are not playing the song in standard tuning today. I'm gonna be naming some very, very basic chords. If you are in standard tuning, could you play the song in standard tuning? Absolutely. It's not gonna sound quite like what we're gonna do today. This is gonna be a lot more open because of the strings that are, that are happening and we're gonna go ahead and talk about that um, in a bit. So before we get started on the lesson, folks, you know I always ask where you're tuning in from. So let me know where you're tuning in from and let me know your dream guitar. If money was no object, dream guitar, what would it be? If you have more than one, I'd love to know. And during our question breaks, I'm gonna be reading a couple of them. So make them good, folks. Again, I am Angela Petrilli here with the Rift Rundown, with the Oxen folks at Fishman. I am so thrilled to be here. So, all right, let's go ahead and get this thing started. So open D tune, or open G tuning, for those of you just tuning in, open G, and it's gonna sound like this. So what's happening when we're tuning to open G? It's like we're playing a regular G chord, right? But we're doing it without any hands anywhere, right? It's already there for us. Now, those of you who are Stones fans and have watched many Stones performances, you may notice that Keith Richards does something really interesting. He takes away the, the low E string when he is in open G. So reason being is that in open G tuning, believe it or not, D is the lowest string. So it's that fifth note, right? So he usually doesn't play with all six strings on the guitar. He usually plays a five string and just uses the bottoms. That's what we're gonna do here. So you will notice during this song, we're not gonna be playing any notes on this low E string. Just to let you know, that's the reasoning behind it. So let's go ahead and get started. What's happening here is we're gonna break down the song into four parts. The intro, the verse, the chorus, and the solo. So those four parts. Again, those of you who have tuned in, who have seen these lessons before, know that I'm gonna break this down nice and slow. We're gonna do varying speeds and all that stuff, okay? So, okay, let's get started. What we're gonna do here is we're going back and forth between a G and an A minor seven, okay? Or an A minor 11, we'll get into that in a second. So it sounds like this. Just let that sink in for a second. Like how beautiful are those two chords in this open tuning? So we've got this G, here's how I'm playing it. First finger, I'm using my first and pinky to do this. Okay, so here's how we're playing it. First finger, pinky finger, right? Yes. First finger is gonna go on the third fret of the B string. Since we have not changed this note in our open tuning, we haven't tuned the string down at all, that note is still D, okay? So, right there, first finger, third fret B string, your pinky, is going to go on the fifth fret of the high E string, okay? We have tuned this string down to D, so this note here that we're playing is now G, okay? 
And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna strum the bottom five strings. We're gonna avoid this, this top D string completely, okay? So it's gonna sound like this. It's a really beautiful open G chord here. Now you may be asking yourself, hey, we were just an open G tuning, so why are you playing a chord and couldn't you just do this? You could. Those are both technically G chords, right? Both of these chords have a G, B, and D within them. Those are the three magical notes that we put together, the one, three, five of G major that we put together to make the G major chord. What's happening here is we're also hitting the same one, three, five. We're just getting different voicings and a different stack of those notes. So we've got D and G here versus B and D. Okay, so we're, we're still playing all three of those same notes that we need to make a G chord. So this is the one that we're gonna do here. It's beautiful, okay? So now let's go ahead and go on to this A minor seven. Okay, so how we're gonna do this, it's gonna look a little different than what we're used to in playing in standard tuning. We're gonna be using these three fingers here, okay? First, second, third finger. With our first finger, we're gonna go ahead and hit that C located on the first fret of the B string, okay? Then what we're gonna do, our second finger, reach up to hit the second fret of the A string. That is our new A note, because remember we tuned the string down to G, so that's our new A, okay? And then your third finger, you are going to press down on the second fret of the D string, which is still E. So when we play this, there's your A minor seven now. If you want it to sound more open, you can include that D string on the bottom. That's going to make it an A minor 11. So if we play this. Isn't it cool? Just a nice new voicing. Again, very different from just your standard A minor. So those are the two chords in the intro. All right, so let's go ahead and do this. We're gonna just alternate between those two chords. That's it, folks. Okay, so that's it, that's the intro. So I'm gonna play it nice and slow. Here we go, follow along, hope you're having fun. So that's what's happening there. We're alternating between those two chords. And isn't that beautiful, right? Open tunings allow you to get these stacks of notes that maybe don't necessarily happen in standard tuning. And a lot of times the chords in open tunings, they're not, they're not too hard to play, okay? So there's our G and there's our A minor seven or A minor 11 if you want to engage that D string, okay? So there we have it there. Those are the two chords in the intro. So that's already part one. We already got through it and it hasn't even been 10 minutes yet, folks. So there you go. And keep in mind too, with these interactive, awesome riff rundowns that we're doing here today, if you guys got questions, please feel free to put them in the chat and, and during our question times. I'm going to go through them and answer as many as I can. And also those of you just tuning in, we're learning the awesome Wild Horses by the Rolling Stones. Let me know where you're tuning in from and let me know your dream guitar. Okay, so that's intro. G and A minor, A minor 7 or A minor 11. Now, let's get to the verse. So the verse here starts with a B minor chord. It's going to look and sound like this. Right, and Keith does that just really awesome upstroke to open up everything. Just listen to that. I'm not even gonna do my commentary over this. Listen to how cool this B minor sounds. Isn't that neat? Again, 
this is just a really, really cool way to play the song in open tuning. And keep in mind, too, there are so many, if you listen to the original version, there are so many guitars tracked on this. So what we're doing with this lesson today, how I've designed it is, you know, I'm taking pieces from this live version. I'm taking pieces from the studio version to make the sound really full and really fun so that if you want to play it by yourself or with a band, it's going to sound really, really good and really rocking. So, okay. So let's go ahead and try this again. Okay. So B minor, how do we play this? First three fingers, first finger, you're going to put that on the third fret of the B string. Okay. Your second finger to place that on the fourth fret of the A string. This is our new root. This is our new B note. Okay. So we put that there. Your third finger, place that directly underneath it. Fourth fret D string. So that is still an F sharp. Okay. So when we play this, the downstroke sounds cool. I'm more of a person who likes to do this and really, really scrape that. I think the way it really introduces the verse very, very nicely. It's almost like this red carpet that's going through, right? And we ought to think about this too with the way that Keith plays. If you notice how he plays, he's very loose and very loose handed, right? He's, you can tell he's always thinking about the time and how the song is moving and how it's breathing, right? So think about that too. We don't wanna be very aggressive in the way that we're strumming this. We want it to be nice and loose and open, right? So think about that. Don't hold the pick super tight either. Again, nice and loose. We want, we want this song to breathe. So don't get too mechanical when you are strumming this. Really feel it. And, and, and here's the thing too. Listen to a lot of different versions of the song and you can see how and listen to how Keith is just being really, really loose and open with the strumming. Okay, so now there's our B minor. We're just gonna do a nice up strum there. Now, if you'll notice, and it's a little tiny thing that I'm doing here, but I do wanna mention it. My thumb is over this E string. And notice I'm muting it. Because when I like to do that up strum, if I happen to hit this E string, my thumb is, is there as a mute, right? Which allows that B, the root of the B minor chord to really get precedence, okay? So that's what we want there. So let's just work on that. And if you notice the scrape here, notice how I'm not doing it straight. I'm giving it a little bit of a curve, like a backward C. So just try that for a little bit. And the closer you get to this saddle, right? It almost sounds really harpy. Whereas if I do it above the sound hole, See how it has a little bit of a different sound? So I'm gonna leave that up to you. Whatever sounds great to you guys. Again, I want you to find your voice and that is something I tell my students all the time. I show you guys how to play things but at the end of the day, I'm here to, to help you find your voice. So if you like this, or you like this, to open it up, totally your call. Know that both are equally awesome. So there we go. And then loose strumming. Then we go to our G chord. No hands, folks. We're in open G tuning, so the, the chord is like already there, okay? So let's go in between that B minor and that G, okay? So I'm gonna do this a few times. a few more times. Okay, so that's B minor and G. So we've got going there, you've got the B minor chord, the G is open, okay? So now what we're gonna do is we are gonna go to the A minor seven or 11, right? We're gonna go back there. That's our next chord in the series, okay? And then what happens next is we're gonna go to C. C is gonna look a little bit different than you're used to, but I'll talk you through it. So I, I bet you it's gonna be a lot easier than you think.
okay? So here we go, B minor to G major. Back to B minor. To G, open. A minor seven. There's C. So what's happening here? First finger only is what we're using. We're placing that across the fifth fret of the guitar on the bottom five strings only. I know, poor D string is just so not invited to the party in this song, like at all. So we're just doing the bottom five, okay? Now, if you'll notice here too, sometimes what I like to do is put my second finger on top of my first, like that. Sometimes I don't, but sometimes I feel like just having that little bit of extra leverage helps to get it nice and clear. So think about it's like a capo clamp that we're doing. Okay, so the notes here, if we think about, okay, what are the three notes that make up the C major chord? Well, it's C, E, and G. We are hitting all three of those notes when we do this. Now, certain, these are what a lot of bar chords look like at least the bar chord major chords, if we're in an open tuning, look like. Why? You have open G like this. So in theory, oh, if that's what a chord, oh, if that's, well, if that's open G, well, if we were to bring that up a whole step, then that's A, isn't it? And then a whole step up and that's B, and a whole step up and this is C. See how that works? So that's what the bar chord shapes look like. Again, why is this happening? Well, remember, we shifted that A string down to G. So that shifts what the chords look like as well. Okay, so let's go through, again, I'm gonna play this very slowly. Let's go through just those four chords, okay? The B minor, G, A minor, and C. So I'm gonna do this a few times, follow along, and this will be fun. So here we go. that a few more times. Okay, one more time. B minor, G, A minor, seven to C. Next chord in the series is going to be D. D is in dog. With this shape, hey, wait a second. Those of us, you know, who 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 who, who knows some theory here. Oh well, C and D are a whole step apart. Yes, in terms of guitar, two frets, folks. So what are we going to do? This shape, we're just going to bring it up to the seventh fret. And there's your D chord right there. So your D, F sharp, and A. Bam. There you go, they're already there. Okay, so here's what happens. If you want to, if you wanna, you know, throw a bone to this poor D string that hasn't been played yet, and give it a little bit more texture and perhaps a little bit more of that droniness, you could throw it in. Just to throw it a bone, because it hasn't been played at all through this entire song so far. So if you wanna do that, that's cool. Okay, so here we go. I'm gonna now include that D chord in here. So it's going to be B minor, G, A minor seven, to C, then to D. Okay, so here we go. Follow along, folks. back 
to G right after that. Okay. So let's do that a few more times here. Follow along. I'll go slow and then I'll go a little faster. that one more time. so far. So that was the breakdown of part of the verse here. So now what happens is we've got that G chord and we go all the way back to D. Okay, so here's the whole series. This is the entire verse. If we look at these chords, they're really not too difficult to play. And this is something I will say in all of these lessons. I tell all of my one-on-one -on -one students too. I tell them the same thing. This is one of, my, one of my mottos and probably the one I use the most. You cannot play anything fast that you can't play slow. So folks, take your time with this. It's okay. It's okay. Take it bit by bit. I would much rather the technique be solid. You hear the chords nice and clearly, instead of trying to rush through it and try to chase the clock and then what happens? The technique kind of crumbles away, right? So we want really, really strong technique here. That should be of utmost importance when you are practicing and of utmost importance when you are playing and when you are learning. So take your time, folks. Slow and steady always wins the race. It always, always does. So take your time, okay? So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go through the intro and I'm gonna go through the verse. I'm gonna show you a quick little riff or a little lick that you can throw in the verse as well. And then I'm gonna go ahead and take some of your questions because I see a lot of them. Folks, keep writing and I will get to as many of these as I can and then we'll, we'll move on to the chorus and then the solo. And that's it, folks. It's gonna be the whole tune. Not too bad, right? Okay, so here we go. So here is the intro into the verse.
intro and verse done so let's go on to a little riff that you can throw in here um again there's so many different versions of this song so you know you can just pick and choose any of just the awesome riffs that keith does he is absolutely one of my favorite guitar players both on electric and acoustic just the just a wizard of guitar you gotta love some keith okay so here we go that's one that I like to do in here, and I'll show you in context how we can throw it in, how we can make this tune sound really, really great. So here's what's happening here, second finger, okay? You're gonna put that on the second fret of the G string, that is our A, we're gonna slide it up to B, a whole step. Just like that. Now your first finger, place that third fret B string, that's our D, D is in dog, okay? Now you're gonna slide back from that B to A and then lift up to, to hit G. So, so far, really slowly. And see how we did that pull off with my second finger? Like that. Okay, so you don't wanna hit it. Let the energy of that pull off make up for that note instead of having to pluck it twice, okay? So here it is a few times nice and slow. Now, the next move is gonna be all it is there, second finger, second fret, D string, that's your E, and then lift up when we do that a little clearer. Like that. So D to E, or E to D. I'm just gonna pull it off there. So here it is, nice and nice and slow, here we go. I'm gonna do that a few more times. Get this under your fingers again. Take your time here. Notice how my hand is very, very balanced when I'm doing this. Don't do this all with one finger because it's just not gonna feel good and you're gonna trip all over the place. So first and second finger to play this riff. That's it, folks. So here we go. putting this riff in between the G chord and the A minor chord. So I'll show you what I mean. Here's the riff in context of the verse. so beautifully into that A minor. So here's the riff into the A minor chord, nice and slow, and then we'll build up speed. Let's do it again a few more times, a little faster. Cool, right? So here's the thing. You can add on to this lick too. Again, keep it tasty, keep it simple. You know, add your own flair to it. Cause Keith, you know, he never plays this, he never plays the song the same way once. So, you know, 
allow yourself to be in that creative moment. You do some cool licks. You know, you never know what you can come up with. So, so here we go. So that was the intro and the verse. Folks, I see a ton of questions, so let's get to a couple of those. We are halfway through the lesson here. Again, I am Angela Petrilli with the Riff Rundown. Today we are learning the awesome, awesome, awesome Wild Horses by the Rolling Stones, okay? With the awesome folks at Fishman, of course. So here we go. Okay, so let's get to a few of these questions here. Let's see what some of your dream guitars are. I'm curious. I'd love a pre-war Martin. That's what, I, that's what I would love. I'd love one of those. Like a 59 Strat. That'd be pretty cool, too. Okay. So, let's see. All right. All right. All right. Let's see here. I know. P poor, lonely, muted six string. I know. I know. <laughs> it's not getting used a ton in this one, but again, anytime you have a D chord and you want to use that drop D string, totally cool to do. Okay. So, and yes, we are in open G, very cool. All right, again, yeah, this is, this is good stuff. Ah, someone wants a pro Telecaster. That's a great one, that's a great one. I love it, I love it, I love it. Okay, so yes, in drop D, uh, or in uh, open G tuning today. So here's what I'm going through. I've got my Martin 00017, uh, 0017 E in black smoke. I've got the Fishman Matrix VT pickups in here. I am going through a Fishman Aura Spectrum DI, okay, acoustic imager. I love it. Again, you guys know it's the little silver box that goes with me at every acoustic gig I do. I absolutely love it. Then what I've got here is the Fishman Loudbox Performer Amp, which is being mic'd by an SM57. And then out to all of you lovely folks all over the world. Again, those of you tuning in. Let me know where you're tuning in from in your dream guitar. Okay, ah, uh, we got someone with a 59 Les Paul. Yes, that's a good dream guitar. That's a good dream guitar. And we got Long Island in the house. Strong Island, thanks for being here, Bob. Very cool. All right, so let's go ahead and get to the chorus here. So here's what's happening in the chorus, okay? A lot of these chords that are in this chorus we have already played except for one, okay? It's the, it's the scary F chord. I know, I know a lot of you <laughs> can be a little frightened with the F chord, but don't worry. It's actually not too bad to play in this tuning, okay? At least in the way that we're playing it today. Not too bad, I promise. Okay, so with the chorus, first chord we're gonna have here is the A minor. Okay. Then we go to C major, again, that bar on the fifth fret of the guitar. Bottom five strings, still that D string, is getting no love. Now, again, I saw a lot of you say, hey, you know, could you take this E string away? Sure, if you want, if you want. I, I gig and play with this guitar quite a bit. I keep it on, but if you guys have a bunch of guitars and you're like, hey, I can keep one and open G tuning and get rid of the E string, you can absolutely do that. You can absolutely do that, but I, I leave it on. I leave it on, okay. So we've got A minor. It's a C major. Slide that up to D, seventh fret. And it's a quick switch, okay? So I'm gonna do that very slowly so you can see the mechanics of what's happening in here. Let's do this a few times, get the speed of it, get it under your fingers, here we go. One more time, here we go. Now, the next chord after this is gonna be open G. We don't have to put our hands anywhere. Just open, okay? So here we go, we're gonna do those four chords. A minor, C, D, G. That's it. So here we go. Okay, we're 
turn it just a few more times. Get this under your fingers. All right, folks, here we go. Not too bad, right? Not too bad. C, D, and G. Okay, so there we go. Now, what's gonna happen here is we are going to have an F chord show up. It's all right though, it's okay. Here's how we're gonna do it. We're gonna bar like we would be playing a C chord. But then what we're gonna do here, we're gonna use our second and third finger, okay? So we're gonna be using these three fingers to play the chord. Now, first finger, we're gonna put that on the sixth fret of the B string. This note here in particular is F, okay? Now what we're gonna do here, your third finger, okay? You're gonna place that on the seventh fret of the D string, okay? This is our A. So if we do that, even just segmenting those chord, those notes, F, A, and C are the three notes that make up F major. So there it is. In this case, we have a C up top. So could you call this F over C? You could. Okay, pretty chord, right? So that's how we play it. Now, you may say, hey, wait a second, that kind of looks like a D minor seven shape in standard tuning. Yeah, it is. That, that would be like a D minor, pretend you're playing in standard tuning and it's a D minor seven shape. That's gonna be your F over C, okay? So let's try this. We're gonna do A minor to C to D to G to F, okay? So, here we go. Again, I'm gonna play this nice and slow. I'm gonna loop this a few times, so follow along. Hear it? Hear how it's super stonesy? That's that Stone's grip, that's that Keith grip. We're seeing it here in this tune. And then obviously the next chord after this is C. Okay, and that's the whole chorus. So let's go ahead and play this, okay? So the chords, if you're following along, A minor, C, D, G, F, C, okay? So here we go, again, I'm gonna do this nice and slow a few times, follow along, then we'll bump up the speed. One more time, a little bit faster. And notice how the strumming here, again, very loose, very open, kind of, sort of sporadic. Again, we want to we want to encapsulate that Keef energy and just play with just the coolest, just the coolest sweet vibes, right? That's that's how we want to do this. Again, very light hand, very light hand. We not we don't want to be mechanical in the way that we strum this at all. Okay, nice and loose and groovy and full of just 
a good word. Let's see. Just nice and open. Don't push it. Don't make this too mechanical. Let this breathe. Okay. So here we go. Here's the chorus. And then we'll go ahead and play all three parts that we've done so far. Okay. So here we go. Okay. Not too bad, right? Not too bad. So let's do this again. Yes, folks, open G tuning, my friends, open G tuning. Okay. And if you guys are wondering what the tuning is, it is, uh, if you go to the link or the description in the YouTube channel, you can go there and figure out what notes we're playing and you can follow along with us. Okay. So here's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to play the three parts that we have already gone over intro, verse, chorus of Wild Horses by the Stones. Okay. Here we go from the top. And again, I'll play it slow and then I'll play it faster. Okay, so here we go. So there are those three bits that we've got down already. So there they are, okay? So let's see, we've got the solo bit left to do here. So here are the chords that are happening in the solo bit. And again, this is the last part. That is the fourth and final bit of the song. So it's going to be F, C, D, and G, done. F and C are gonna rock back, back and forth a little bit. And then we go from C to D and then back to G and then goes into that beautiful B minor into 
the verse. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do here. We're gonna go ahead and play it, break it down again. Here's how we're gonna do it. So how do we build that F chord again? Pretend you are playing the C major, right? This is our bar because we're in open tuning, we're in open G. And then your second finger, sixth fret of the B string, your third finger, seventh fret of the D string, D is in dog, okay? That's your F, okay? Because F, A, and C are all in there, okay? So here we go. So we're gonna go to F. And again, loose hand to C, lift that second and third finger. Let's do that again really slow. So, if you have a guitar that perhaps needs a setup and the action is really high, this part of the tune is probably gonna be a little difficult. So make sure when you are playing this that your guitar is properly set up. What do I mean by that? That the action, okay, so that is the space between the fretboard and the strings, right? That, 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 that space, that amount you have to press, okay? Make sure it is comfortable for you. Some folks like it a little higher, some folks like it a little closer. Totally up to you. Just be aware that this is gonna take some serious hand strength. And again, something like this is a really good exercise in building that hand strength within the palms and the fingers. So even just See what I mean? So yes, Guitar OCD is saying that the Keith chord. That's that Keith chord. We hear this in so many different Stones tunes. That'll be another one for another week. Just saying. But see how we recognize this grip. So with that, just make sure the guitar is comfortable enough so. Okay. So for this tune, we're obviously not playing it like that in this Stones tune. We're slowing it down a little bit, but that's the grip. So F to C, release, second and third finger again, F, to F again. There we go. Now, let your hand rest a little bit. I know, I'm feeling it too. So there you go, that's a good like little exercise I like to, I like to do, one hand a clap, like that. And then just the one handed wave. Let all of those fingers really get a good stretch. Especially with a chord, like those two chords like that with F and C, it's good to get the blood flowing in the hands, okay? So there we go. Or F. Slide that up to D, then to G. That's the whole solo part right there, okay? F and C, that repeats, so that happens twice. And then you slide up to D, and then open G, let the hand relax, okay? So let's do that again, slowly, then we'll do it to speed. So here we go, F. That's the tune, okay? So here's what we're gonna do now. I am going to play the entire bit, all four parts, okay? The intro, the verse, the chorus, and the solo, okay? So those four parts. Again, follow along, and this is one of those tunes that is just you can play it in standard tuning, but there is something just so magical about doing this in open tuning. 
So here we go. time is practice that F. Now the chorus or the solo. throw in that riff again. And getting back into the verse, you can totally do that too. So that's the tune, folks. Those four parts is what makes up the song. Now, you absolutely could play this in standard, but there is, I, I to me, I'm such a purist. I just really, any time that I am playing this song live, I tune my guitar to, to open G. I just, I always do. Anytime really I'm playing any Stone songs where it has that Keith chord, right? It's one that takes some practice. So again, as I mentioned, slow and steady wins the race here. Make sure that the technique is good. Is it... it it's tough to press, I know. And, and especially the E string gets right on that joint, right? So it can be a little tough because you've got that string right on the bone. But use that second finger if it helps you press a little more. Because again, if we're not pressing hard enough, we're gonna get muting happening. So again, slow and steady. Also too, that relationship of that first finger and that thumb, if your thumb isn't pressing hard enough, you can't get the full scope of the chord, right? And getting all the nuances. So make sure that relationship is strong. And again, it takes some practice. So be gentle, be kind to yourself when you're learning this. And I tell my students too, my one-on-one my -on -one students, the moment that you really get frustrated, that's the time when your brain is like, I'm done, I can't learn anymore. So when you get to that moment and you're learning, you're like, gosh, I'm getting too frustrated. Walk away, go get like a glass of water or something and come back and just 
take a good deep breath. Like that helps in so many things in life, right? Take a good deep breath and come back to this. And here's the thing. You don't have to play it as fast as I do or as fast as Keith does, right? That takes practice. When I was first learning this, this was a pain in the butt. So I totally understand. Slow and steady. Take your time, take your time. And again, when you hit that frustration point, walk away and then come back to it. But incorporate this in your daily practice. Okay, I'm gonna take, you know, a, a, a few solid moments to really, really analyze and really with intention play the best chords that I can play. And listen, some days, you know, the chord may sound lousy. It's fine, it's all part of learning. It means that you are learning. It may sound lousy one day and then it starts to sound a little, le a little less lousy the next day. So give, your sp give yourself that space to enjoy the journey. And yes, even though I know some of the chords can sound a little tough, keep at it. Promise, promise, promise you will get there. I promise, promise, promise. So let's do that one more time. I'm gonna play the entire thing, okay? And follow along. This has been so much fun, you guys. I'm seeing all the wonderful comments. Thank you all so much. I'm glad you guys enjoyed this as much as I did. Okay? So here we go. Here is the intro. practice with that F chord. bit into the verse okay again be gentle with yourself take your time I know that F chord is tough as you can see you can see all the lines in my fingers from playing this 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 tune too so it's again practice 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 and you know when when some folks say you know practice makes perfect that's something I don't believe I think really good well-intentioned practice makes great music. So be very well-intentioned when you are practicing, you know, don't have your phone nearby and then like check your phone every, you know, five seconds. Put the phone away, right? Put the phone away and practice and focus solely on the instrument and the task at hand here. I promise your playing is going to get so much better. That is something I tell my students all the time. And I do one-on-one -on -one lessons too, folks. If you visit my website at Angela Petrilli Music, you can, you can uh, go there and all of that good stuff, all of that good stuff. So I am done with, you know, teaching the tune. That is it. This will be on YouTube. You can watch these anytime. We are live right at this moment right now on March 20th or March 27th today, but you can go back anytime and go and see exactly what I am doing here, the tuning we are in, all of that good stuff. So yeah, again, I, 
absolutely, I absolutely love to teach and I love playing the song and to teach the song and play it is just like such a gift and it has been so, so great. So let's get to some of your questions. So we finished with the instructional part. Let's get to the Q and A's. Those of you who have questions about, hey, like what exactly was going on here? Perhaps some, uh, you know, practice techniques and getting some of the things we went over today a bit better and, and all of that good stuff, by all means, please, feel free to write them in the comments and I will get to as many as I can, folks. Again, my name is Angela Petrilli here with the Riff Rundown with the awesome folks at Fishman. If you have not done so already, be sure to go ahead, give us a follow. You can follow me, Angela Petrilli Music, on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Angela Plays Guitar. Um, you know, if you like funny animal videos and pictures of my guitar, so you can follow me on Twitter and TikTok too. It's just guitar stuff. I don't do any silly dancing on there. Be sure to follow the folks at Fishman on all of their socials. There are some really, there's some really, really great content. Be sure, those of you who love guitar and sounds and all that goodness, be sure, be sure, be sure to follow the folks at Fishman. Okay, so let's get to some of your questions here. Nico is asking, show the A minor chord again, no problem. So the A minor is like this, first finger is gonna be on the C sharp, first fret of the B string, okay? Second finger, second fret of the A string because this is where our new A is because we tune that string down to G, okay? Third finger, press that down, or not C sharp, that's C. That's C, not C sharp, C. And then we've got A here and E here, which those three chord, or those three notes, A, C, E, make up the A minor chord. There we go. <laughs> so that's how we play that, okay? And it's an A minor seven because we have that G there, okay? And then if you include this D, then it's an A minor 11. Okay? Someone is asking if you could do this on a 12 string. Absolutely. Um, me personally, I don't know if I have the patience to tune a 12 string to, to this open tuning, but yes, you totally can. And I bet it would sound absolutely epic. So the answer is yes. You totally, totally could. Patience to you for, for getting that guitar and that tuning. Um, again, glad, glad you guys enjoyed this. This has been a joy for me to teach you all today. Let's get to a few more a few more of your questions here. Again, uh, those of you who are asking what kind of guitar this is, this is an, a triple O 17 E Martin guitar. I love this thing. It's really starting to show its age, which is pretty cool. You can tell I strum pretty aggressively. You can see just faintly up here where I strum and then down, down there as well. It's good. Patina is quite nicely. I absolutely love this thing. It's a good one. So again, thank you all. This has been such a blast. We'll be back here, same time, same channel, 12 p.m. Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern, those of you in the States. It's just a pleasure. It has been such an honor and a joy to, to do this for you all. I'm gonna be doing another acoustic lesson next week. I'm debating, I'm between two songs, so I'm debating which one it'll be. I am, I am not sure yet, but I promise it'll be a super fun one. So again, thank you all so, so much. I hope you've learned something cool today. I hope I could demystify some of the things that are going on in this tune and happy playing, happy playing. Be kind to one another, stay safe, play a lot of music and folks, I'll see you next week.